Hey guys, today I'm doing another video that hopefully you all are gonna enjoy. This time, it's on which places are going to be the coldest this winter. So, where the coldest temperatures are going to be 2016-2017 winter season. So, in order to make a prediction, we first need to look at the current weather pattern. And what it's showing us, these two images, is the cold air coming down into the west and then moving into the east. And that is usually what happens with the La Nina. And it, after this happens, you see the cold air is across the majority of the northern U.S. It goes away. There's a brief warm-up. Temperatures rise. There could be storms. It could be whatever. Temperatures rise. But on the horizon, you could see there is another Arctic cold mass. But then now even stronger than the previous one. So, if that's not telling you anything, it pretty much means that if the La Nina continues, and this keeps going on, then the masses are going to get colder and colder and colder, until it's actually dangerously cold. So, that already gives us one hint, and look at the prediction, that the pattern is pretty much agreeing with what the outlooks are saying. Periods of bitter cold, that's what AccuWeather was saying. That's right now, it's agreeing with that. Much below average, yep, that's also happening. Here, temperature outlook, December through February, likely below, that's also happening. This one's a little bit underplaying it, but um, the cold temperatures are definitely shown on this map. Also, this is a huge major role playing in the outlook for temperatures. Because the La Nina is slightly favored to persist 55 or greater chance through the winter 2016-2017. Um, here's a little graph that shows the El Nino being in red, La Nina in blue, and the La Nina kind of uh, is a little bit more favored than the El Nino, and the neutral is really taking over, but that's already in um, the summer, March, June, spring, so we're only worrying about the winter. And the La Nina is favored through the winter, meaning that the co each cold mass will get colder and colder and colder until it leads into events like this. This is an image from 2015 February. I don't know if some of you remember this. For sure, there must be some out there. It was so damn cold that my school didn't have school for three days in Chicago. It was almost negative 20 during the day. It was just, it was just shocking. Because that this is what happens if each cold mass gets colder and colder. These cold temperatures might happen this winter also if the La Nina is uh, predicted to persist like they're saying right here. So with all that coming together, we go to our outlook, my outlook. And there's a bunch of different colors. I'll explain each color to you guys. Starting off with the dark purple. The dark purple is going to experience the most cold temperatures, the most frigid and probably the most cold days i don't know this for sure happens at your school that it gets it's so cold that you don't have school yeah that's what happened uh, several times in 2015 that year that i showed you happened four times to us so probably days like those are gonna happen across here frigid they're gonna get the brunt of the winter and that's where the coldest the coldest temperatures are gonna happen if the la nina persists throughout the winter now some of you are looking at the north northeast and if you live there you're like what we want cold we're gonna get cold why not us well there's actually a major reason why you will have slightly uh, warmer temperatures than uh, the almost i almost said countries oh my god than the states across uh, that are not near the ocean because the ocean is so warmed up thanks to the hot summer that in bitter shots like this this one that i see right here it is gonna slightly keep these temperatures and these um these states across the the, the coast gonna keep the temperature slightly warmer meaning it won't be nearly as cold in some of those major events but don't get me wrong, they're still going to be below average this winter. They're not going to be warm. They're not going to be a glass year. Last year, it was just across the east. It was just so warm. It's not going to be like that this year. So after I do the purple and pink, it's time to move on to the dark blue. The dark blue is going to be very cold also, but not nearly as cold as it states in the dark purple because there is going to be some strong... Um, storms that are gonna bring up some Gulf of Mexico temperature and moisture and people that know that know that those storms can be really strong so 
These states will be, since they're more to the south, will get more influenced by this warmth, and on some occasions they could get mild little bursts of temperatures into the 50s or 60s in midwinter like last year it happened several times but reaching up to wisconsin this year he won't reach up as far north but it will reach into say kansas missouri kentucky west virginia southern parts of illinois probably also that's why they are in dark blue and montana's in dark blue and wyoming because the la nina of the of the coast could blow in some warm temperatures that that being said we move on to the light blue which is the southeast, because, <sighs> so, what I'm saying is, they're going to have chilly temperatures, but are they going to have cold, really cold, memorable temperatures, that everybody's going to remember as the cold winter of 2016 and 17, no, most likely not, because the Arctic air isn't going to penetrate that far south, I don't think, so as of now, that's what it is, these states that you see shaded in the Orange, it's broad area, southwest, are going to be slightly above average because the La Nina Arctic cold uh, masses are going to tend to flow like that, like that. And they're not going to really affect this part too much and not in El Nino, so a little bit drier and a little bit slightly above um, temperatures. Now, up here, I'll probably also include Nevada into these states. Um, the dark green is also slightly above average temperatures or even just simply above average temperatures but with plenty of moisture and plenty of rainfall I, I couldn't really mark california out because i would mark northern california to about here in this category but this map only late uh, made me could let me shade in the whole state so i would probably include northern california northern uh, nevada and northern utah being in the dark green with above average precipitation and um, above average precipitation and warmer temperatures. So the brunt of the cold is going to be on the east side. No warm, no cold on the west that's going to be so memorable. Only on the east and probably just the northern central east because Wyoming, Montana, yeah, sure, they'll be colder than average, but nothing too memorable. And the southeast, it's not going to get that far south. So that is pretty much it, guys. As always, thanks for watching. And see you on the next episode.